Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spine Safe Matt Pilates. And today we're using TheraBand as our small prop. And if you have a Versa loop or a continuous loop, uh, I think Versa loop's a brand name. But anyway, if you have one of these, we'll be using these as well. So let's go ahead and go to our sides and roll onto our back and just leave the, um, the props next to you. Make sure when you lay on your back that you're able to be comfortable in your neck. So if your um, head is tilted back, like you're looking overhead, you may need to have a pillow underneath your head. Okay? If you can look straight up toward the ceiling and feel comfortable, that's perfect. Let's place our arms next to us, and then we'll be lifting our hips up and down a few times. So for someone with bone density loss called osteopenia or osteoporosis, we want to make this lift really, really small, just enough to slide your hand underneath your bum and just enough to remove the weight of your bum off the mat, okay, even. So if you do not have bone density loss and you feel okay lifting up a little higher, you can do that until you feel a stretch in your thighs and then lower back down. So we'll do this uh, bridging or bottom lift a few times. And our purpose here is just to wake up our buttock muscles and to lengthen our spines on the way back down. So a couple more here. And lift and breathe. And we're breathing through our whole movement just naturally. It's not, um, you know, a lot of work yet and so we don't have to worry about synchronizing our breathing with our movements. We can just breathe in a way that feels natural to us. Okay and last one. Perfect job. All right so now let's place our hands spanned across our belly and just make sure that you can feel a good part of right below your ribs all the way down to the base of your abdomen. Your arms can just rest comfortably on the floor. Take a breath. And as you exhale, pull your navel softly in, pull your pelvic floor softly upward, and then lift one leg. Bring your knee in close to your abdomen. And then add the other leg and see if you can do that without your belly popping up. If that was not possible, you can bring one foot down and then you'll be lifting one leg at a time, okay? If that was possible, you do your toe taps. And by toe taps, we are just lowering one leg down toward the floor and the thigh is moving away from our body. So if so much, sometimes we think, oh, we're gonna just bring our leg down like this and that's not really increasing the work in the trunk. So we'll, move the thigh away and then feel with your fingers the work in your belly and feel that you have the ability to keep your back the same distance from the mat. So we don't have to be imprinted here on the mat, but just we're stable on the mat. Okay. And if that feels good, you can do that for a little bit more. And if you need more, you can try zipping up your thighs together and then bringing both of them down toward the mat. And anytime I offer something, if it's a little much, a little bit more than you bargained for, just go back to the previous version. Then one more, and then let's go ahead and take our hands off our belly, place them on our knees, let your lower legs hang floppy, just take your knees around in guided circles. And we'll go the other direction, mirror image guided circles. Just do a little bit of a back and hip release. There we go. And then hug your knees in towards your chest. Good. Now let's go ahead and take your right hand to the top of your left uh, shin and the left hand down to the outer left ankle and extend the other leg. Figure out by raising and lowering the other leg a few times where it is that the leg needs to be in space for you to be comfortable and working, okay? Wing out your elbows and then switch the leg you're holding and just hold onto the right leg and raise and lower the left leg a couple of times and feel how the work changes. The lower the leg goes, the more the work, the higher the leg, the less the work, okay? 
So then we turn this into our single leg stretch and we're just going to keep our heads down for the moment and switch and switch and switch. Now, the fun part, the brain part of this is the outer hand always goes to the outer ankle. Very good. So there we go, switch and switch. Let's do one more on each side. Good, and then gather your knees into your hands again. This time, keep your legs zipped up together and guide your thighs around in a mirror image circle. And you're going around the sacrum this time. Okay, and the other direction. Perfect, and let's go ahead and let our feet float down to the mat. And let's take our piece of TheraBand. So depending on the color of the TheraBand, you might be working with something that is heavier or lighter. If it feels too light, you can always double it up. If it feels too heavy, then you have more space between the, your hands. You have, it, have less tension between your hands. I'm just gonna go ahead and start out light this morning. So if I hold my arms up over my chest and about as wide as my shoulders, I'll have just a little smiley face in the TheraBand. Legs are hip distance apart and parallel. And then we'll go ahead and pull the band slightly apart, just enough to feel that you can pull your shoulder blades down your back and then lift up your hips. So take a breath, engage your buttock muscles and lift your hips to an appropriate height and lower them down. So we'll keep that movement going. Now, this time we're going to be breathing with our movement. Okay, so here we go. Inhale to lift, exhale, lengthen your spine down. Okay, inhale to lift, exhale, lengthen your spine down. Now we'll add some arm movement. As you inhale and lift, bring your arms down to meet your thighs. Inhale, press your arms past your thighs down toward the floor. And exhale, and bring your arms back up over your chest. Inhale, lift your hips, press the band down. Exhale, and raise your arms. Good. Keep moving with your breath. So this is a TheraBend variation of Joe's breathing from our Cadillac and trapeze table repertoire. And it's lovely. Good. Let's do two more for 10. And last one. Beautiful job. Now, take your band and take one foot, loop your band around the sole of the foot. So find a place on the sole of your foot where it's comfortable and then cross your band into an X. And this is just to secure the foot a little bit better in the loop of the band. So ideally, we're going to have our backs of our arms on the mat. And then when you push your foot up toward the ceiling and straighten your leg, you had a little bit of tension to support the band, but it's not overly tight. So feel that your leg is supported, but your hands aren't overworking to try to hold on to the band, okay? And then we're going to stretch here for just a moment, bend and press your foot into the band. Let's just do that four times. Bend, press, just keep breathing naturally. Good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just bend your knee in toward your chest. Take the other knee in toward your chest and change feet in the band, which may or may not work perfectly well. So we'll have our other leg on the floor bent and one leg in the band. And then we'll do this press toward the ceiling again. So we're just pre-stretching our hamstrings a little bit. We'll just do that four times. So really press into the ceiling with intention of straightening your leg. Perfect. And then go ahead and bend that knee in, place both feet into the band. So the TheraBand is still crossed. You're still holding on to the ends of it. And you're going to adjust the, the uh, tension on the TheraBand to a place that feels like it's supportive without you know, overworking your grip. So then press both legs toward the ceiling. Okay, we'll do that four times. 
and two. Make sure you've got a good tension on the band that makes sense. Three and four. Now pay attention to your neck. Make sure your neck is long. Try to straighten your legs as much as possible and then slowly and carefully lower your legs down. Make sure that as you lower your legs down, you stop at the point where you feel tension in your belly and then pick up your legs again. So we could inhale as we go down and then exhale to bring the legs up. Or if you feel safer exhaling down, that's fine too. Okay, so um, it's the most important thing is to breathe. So we're just gonna do our leg lowers here. And we'll do two more for six. And last one. Good, and then just bend your knees in and hold your knees for a second. Don't take the band off your feet. We can go around in circles. Let's kind of rock the pelvis a little bit. Perfect, and then placing the backs of the arms back on the mat, shoulders down, back of the neck long. We'll take a breath, bring your legs into a, you know, just bent at the hip and knee. Keep your feet flexed like they're standing on the floor and then press outward. So we're keeping our legs parallel so the band will go on the outsides of your thighs when you bend your knees in. So this is what I call not frogs because it's not frogs and one of my friends in class a few years ago named it tadpoles. So there you go, we have tadpoles. There it is. And we'll do two more for six. And keep breathing. Good, and then just hold on to your knees again. And this time you can just bring your knees in and out, just kind of rock your sacrum. This is sort of like a little cat cow right on the mat. Good. And then we'll get ready to do frogs. So frogs is externally rotated. So this time the bands will be traveling right inside your thighs. So you're holding your arms in this uh, sort of bicep curl position and your toes stay out, your heels stay together and you press out, zip up your thighs and then bend back in again. Okay. So let's go for six. If you want more work out of it, you lower the where your legs are traveling and maybe pause for a moment in the out position and let your belly work. And two more. Perfect job. Okay, and let's go ahead and bring our knees in and we'll take the band off of our feet. Just set the band aside, open up your hands, then take your arms wide, zip up your legs and ankles together and take your knees over to one side. Be careful if you've had a hip replacement that your whole, both of your thighs and your pelvis are all rolling together. We'll go to the other side, give ourselves a little stretch. Exhale to bring your legs back to center. Let's do one more on each side. Good. Let's take our band again. And I'm just going to keep holding one, um, you know, one uh, um, piece of the band here instead of doubling it over a single width a little bit wider than um, the shoulders right over chest, okay? So now we'll take a breath, and as we exhale, you can bring your legs into a close tabletop. Zip up your legs, place the band across your shins, and then press down and up in little beats. So this would be a hundred variation, and it's pretty challenging. So if this feels like too much for you, so you're breathing in on five, and breathing out on five. If this feels like more than you bargained for, you can actually just tighten up the band, keep your feet down and place the band across your upper thighs, okay, like so, okay? So inhale two, three, four, five, exhale two, three, four, five, right? 
Just keep breathing. And so with her head down, although if you really, really, really wanted to bring your head up, you could do that as long as you don't have bone density loss, osteo somebody or disc derangement. So nod your chin and roll up. Just be careful about doing that, especially when we're using resistance like this. It's, there's a more stabilization required of the neck. Okay. And last inhale. And last exhale. Beautiful job. And we'll bring our feet down, take the band off, set it aside, and then carefully stretch our legs out. Stretch your arms overhead. You just visualize how a cat stretches in the sun. You know, they just stretch and get twice as long as they appear to be normally. It's amazing. Take a breath and then bring your arms back down. Good. And bring your legs back in. So now we'll take our band and place it around the sole of your right foot. Cross it into the X and hold it a comfortable supportive place with your backs of your arms on the mat. Shoulders are down and lengthen the back of your neck. So now straighten your leg up into the band and just gauge like where you need to be, where you feel supported. And then if it's okay with your body to extend the other leg long, go ahead and do that. If that does not feel good, you can leave it bent, okay? So we'll begin with our single leg circles here and we'll go with stability circles first. So we bring our leg down and bring it out to the width of the mat to circle it back up. So in this one, we're doing a hip replacement safe variation. We're actually making a letter D on the outside of the body, right? So it's straight down the middle and then you curve to come back up, okay? So we'll do one more in this direction. And just keep adjusting the uh, tension on the band to a place that feels like it's supporting your hip socket um, and is not you know, too hard on your hands to hold. This is a great way to do uh, single leg circles, especially for people who have snapping hips or clunking or popping hips is the band actually helps keep the, um, the ball of your hip right in place. So it helps to support the placement of your hip joint. And one more. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and bring both knees in. And we can change the leg. Okay, press it up. See if it's okay to straighten your other leg. If it's not, you may keep it bent. And then we'll do our single leg circles on the other side. All right, so nice and easy, just breathing down the middle and circling up and out the side. One more in this direction. And we'll go the other direction. Listening for any kind of popping or snapping. If that is in your body, just tighten up on the band and pull into your abdominals and pelvic floor a little bit more for more internal support. And one more. Perfect job. So we'll bend both knees in and take the band off. Perfect. So now let's take our hands behind the base of our skull, interlace your fingers, and you can have your elbows winged up a little bit. They don't have to be totally flat. Okay. And then we'll bring our ankles and our knees together. Let's just do a little lift and lower of the hips to organize our spine. And then take a breath, pull up your pelvic floor and pull it to belly softly as you exhale. And just press the backs of your ribs into the mat a little bit, okay? And this may cause your head to lift up about an inch. 
This is what I call the head hover. Okay, so we're not in flexion. We're actually still neutral. We're just responding to the uh, ribs pressing into the mat. So this is some work. You can feel the work in the upper abs from doing that pressing back of the ribs. So then from here, we can just take a little circle as if we were gonna paint a circle on the ceiling with our nose. So your body is circling and you're circling from your rib cage, from your low ribs and your head, neck and shoulders are staying in place. So it's almost like we're just doing a little hula in our, um, in our abdomen. Okay. And then we'll go the other direction. So on the, on the circle down, right, I can just feel that my knuckles are grazing the mat, okay? And we're, so we're very, very close to the mat. And one more. Perfect. And then we'll just rest down. And then let's go ahead and just bring one leg up into a close tabletop. And then we'll rotate our heart toward that thigh. So when we do that, if I've got my right leg lifted, my left shoulder blade is off the mat and I've rolled kind of onto my right shoulder blade. Then we'll come back to center, head is down and just supported in the hands, left leg lifts. I'm gonna to rotate toward the left thigh. So the right shoulder blade's off the mat, left one is on the mat, and both hips are pressing down. So we have some marching and the marching is head down and we're rotating at our waist. We have three points of contact, your two hips and one shoulder blade, just alternating, okay. So now if you do not have to keep your head down, if you do not have osteo something, right, you could go ahead and nod your chin and come up to your bra strap line and be doing the same thing with your head supported and lifted. So you want to Think about pressing your head back into your hands a little bit so that we're not pulling on the neck, okay? And so we're just doing an alternating marching and rotation. So head up or head down, right? So once you've got that down, you could bring both legs up and then extend the leg you're rotating away from, either head down or head up. And we have our crisscross. And it's nice to pause for a moment in the end position and just really feel the mat. Feel the pressure of your shoulder blade into the mat, both hips even on the mat, the strength of your thigh as your leg is extended, the strength of your belly, and the fact that your head, neck, and shoulders are completely supported and you're breathing, always breathing. And let's do one more on each side. And then we'll come down to rest, uninterlace your fingers, take your arms out wide, legs together, and we'll stretch off to one side. Just take a couple of breaths. And then we'll bring our knees back through the center and go off to the other side and stretch. And exhale back to center. We'll bring our arms back in. And let's go ahead and roll over to one side. So we'll have the, um, we'll have our band. So you can either use your Versa loop at this juncture and place it up um, on the thighs right above your knee. Or if you don't have one of those, you can make a loop out by doubling over your long band. Okay, and you'll place it around your thighs doubled over and then put the two loose ends through the loop. And when you do that, the loose ends in the loop right here are on the side you're going to be laying on. Okay, so your weight of your leg keeps them together without having to make a knot. That's right. Okay, so then we lay down, legs are bent. Oh, made it, good. So we line up our body head to tail with the mat, and then your hips and your knees are both bent. And you can choose a chair position or kind of a Z position 
Now we all lift our side waist up. Let's place our other hand on our top hip and we'll start with simple clams. So as you open your legs, you're rotating your top leg. Also press the bottom leg into the mat. Now, if your um, band is up close to your body, that's going to be less work. So if your band is down closer to your knee, that's going to be more work, okay? So when the band is up too high, we're not really getting the benefit of pressing into it to increase the resistance. Yeah, you can feel that, right? <laughs> I love it. I just love our toys and our mat and our wonderful practice that's developed from Joseph Pilates' brilliance. And last one. Okay, good. So now we'll go ahead and keep your leg bent, but bring it up. Okay, so let's just start with a couple of up and down. Let's say five, right? And when you lift up and down, go all the way down and all the way up. And remember to keep pressing into the floor. All right. So hopefully the, having the band underneath your bottom leg is helping you to not have to hold it. So if you have that uh, band passed through the loop and everything is underneath your bottom leg, you should not have to hold like between the floor and your bottom leg. You shouldn't have to hold it. There we go, yeah. And that was way more than five, sorry. I lost track and stopped counting. So yeah, so we'll stop for a moment. And then let's see how it is to do our bicycles with the bottom leg bent, the band on. So we lift up, bring your leg forward, extend your leg long, take the leg back, bend at the knee and bring it forward. Okay, so we're just going to do this four times in each direction, and this time I really mean it. Spider fingers in front, shoulder blade down the back, yep, and keep the band down close to your knee. Three, and four. Good, let's go ahead and swing the leg forward, and then bend. Take the bent leg back, and lengthen out of your hip and out of your torso, swing the leg forward, bend, and then lengthen. Swing the leg forward, bend. Yeah, keep breathing, shoulder stays down. One more, swing the leg forward, bend, and lengthen, good, and rest down. Well, that was some work. All right, well, one good exercise deserves another, doesn't it? So again, let's bring our leg up, straighten the leg, press down with the bottom leg, and we'll do five circles in each direction. So you can choose how big they are. See if you can keep your body still on the mat with your side waist lifted, okay? If you don't need your hand for support, bring it up, palm facing forward. And five, oh my goodness, I can really feel this in my hip. So we just keep smiling. <laughs> Three four, and five, and rest. Whew. All right, let's go ahead and come up, and we'll change sides. So, let's see if I can turn this tofu. I'm just going to use the other one for the second side. Why not? See how it is. All right, so we line up head to toe up with the back of the mat, or head to tail, excuse me, legs are bent. We start with our simple clams. So our hips are stacked, our shoulders are stacked, the side waist is lifted. And the reason I like to put my hand here at first is just to make sure my hip's not rolling back. Because sometimes, you know, when we have a range of motion, um, that's different in one hip than the other, right? If I don't have as much external rotation in this hip, then my pelvis is gonna to wanna to roll back with the movement at some point. So just check on that, make sure really just doing the hip, okay? And then we let that go. You press down into the mat with your bottom leg as you lift the top leg up. Make sure that your 
knee and ankle and foot are all lifting at the same rate of speed. I think we did about 10 on the other side because I lost track. So we might as well just do the same thing here. And two more. Awesome job, very nice. Keeping the bottom leg bent, we then move into our bicycles. So we'll lift up the top leg, bring your thigh forward, extend your leg forward, then take it back. Now bend your knee, keeping your thigh back, bring the bent leg forward, straighten it forward. You find your hamstring stretch. Here you find your quad stretch. Make sure you're lifting your side waist. So like my friend Stephanie says, no saggy mattresses. And one more. And then take your thigh back, extend your leg long, bring your leg forward, bend, and the form on this side um, that you're seeing right now is not the best on this leg um, because the shoji screens behind me are limiting my range of motion. So in case you're wondering why the leg is looking like it's tracking a little funny, it's not what you're supposed to be doing, but that's the environment that's happening right now. So just so you know, last one. Oh, perfect. And we'll rest down for a moment. And then, but wait, there's more. So we can have our hand in front of us on our hip or up, right? Bring your top leg up, straighten it, and let's do five small circles in each direction. Your circles can be the um, size that makes sense for you. Keep pressing your bottom leg into the mat. Perfect. Okay, and then we can meet up with that. Oh, that was uh, that was some work. So good. We'll take our band, our theraband, or whatever it is we've got around our thighs off. Yeah, and you know what would be really nice to do right now would be a figure four stretch. So let's do that. Set your band aside, and then cross one ankle on top of the opposite knee. And usually, what I like to do first before I grab a thigh is just bring my uh, supporting leg in, okay, and go up onto the toes to get a stretch. If that's not enough stretch for you, you can take your double Dover band and reach it through and around the bottom thigh and then use it kind of like you would use a yoga strap. Yeah. So just find a meaningful stretch and it's gonna be in your outer um, glute and hip of the top leg. People call this a piriformis stretch, but I will often experience that people will feel this, um, not just in the piriformis, but in the trough between your, um, your femur bone and your sit bone, and also down into the hamstring area. So basically you're gonna stretch whatever is tight back there and it's all good. Just keep on breathing. And if you don't feel the stretch, congratulations. That means that your muscles are um, at a very good length, okay? Uh, it's what we would call our air quotes, normal length tension in the muscles. Let's go ahead and switch sides. And then move your supporting thigh in as close as it needs to be to feel a nice stretch in the um, outer hip and glute and upper thigh area of the top leg. And just keep breathing. If you feel like you've got one side that's tighter than the other, 
you can go back and repeat that side. We'll just hold this stretch for another five seconds or so, and then we'll be moving along. And we'll go ahead and unwind. Let's pull our shoulders on our backs, lengthen the back of your neck, lift and lower your hips to organize your spine. And let's take our left leg in both hands and hold your leg behind your thigh or behind the calf, depending on where you can reach without excessively rounding your shoulders. We'll just do a couple of bend and crest toward the ceiling. Good, and then switch the leg you're holding. Do a couple of bend and press toward the ceiling. So this is an active release stretch for the hamstring. Okay, go back to the first leg, bend and press one time. Reach up your leg as much as you can without rounding, and then extend your other leg into the uh, room. Find the place where your leg can lower and feel like you're working without strain and then switch the leg you're holding. So we have our single long leg stretch with our head down. If you prefer to have your head up, you can certainly do that. Have your head up. If you don't have bone density loss or disc issues, okay? It's head down if that is your case. And then we can do a little pulse, pulse, and pulse, pulse. So your elbows are wide and you're using your hands pulling on your leg and your leg pressing into your hands to actively stretch and strengthen, okay? Pulse, pulse, and pulse, pulse, okay? So both legs are lifted and we're moving from side to side. Single long leg stretch. And one more on each side. Beautiful job, and just bring your knees into your chest. Take your knees around in a couple of circles on each side. Beautiful. And then we'll stretch out long. One stretch. And bring our arms back down, roll over to our side, and sit up. We're standing at the front of the mat. Got our band, and let's just have it hold on to one length of it, so not a doubled over length, and have it have no tension at the start position. So we'll be holding it fairly low. So the higher we hold, the higher up the muscles we recruit in our shoulders. So I'd like to aim for the mid back today. So let's go ahead and stand at the front of the mat, find your weight even on both feet, take a breath, and then as you exhale, Reach back with your right foot, land on your toes, and spread the band apart, and use your body as a fulcrum for a chest expansion. And then we step forward with the right leg, just have it meet the left, and switch sides. Okay, so we're doing a chest expansion with a back step or lunge. So from side view, once the band presses into, the, into your hips, you're just pressing your arms back a little further, kind of like, when we were doing um, Joe's breathing earlier in class and our bridging, okay? So, and you can, if you need more challenge, just go ahead and lower down into a lunge as you step back, that's completely fine. If you're working on balance or your knees aren't happy with a lunge, just keep your legs straight, okay? So we'll just keep moving with our breath. See if you can slide your shoulder blades down and lift your chest. Let's do a couple more on each side. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and come back to the front of the mat. Roll your shoulders back and down. Step back one time. So land on your toes, if at all possible, with your back heel lifted. And then zip up from pubic bone to navel to sternum to feel perhaps a stretch in the front and the top of your back thigh. And from here, we'll go into a shoulder stretch. So if you're healing a shoulder, make sure that you're only going in a range that is comfortable for your shoulder. So the band is, is pulled apart a little bit. 
as we bring it up to about forehead height, pull it apart more and see if it's okay to bring it up and overhead and down your back behind you. And so by keeping tension on the band, you're helping to support the shoulder socket, the arm bone, the humeral head and the socket. And we're giving ourselves a little stretch in the chest as we come back behind us. So we're just gonna go very carefully and only in a pain-free range of motion. And we'll do this three times, okay? So this will be three. So breathing up and over, back behind, still holding your back step or your lunge, stretching the thigh of the leg behind you. And once you bring your arms back down that third time, pull into belly, lean forward slightly to release the stretch and step forward. Good. And then just kind of walk it out for a second. And then we'll bring our other leg back. So you want to have a long enough stance that you feel a stretch in the back thigh. Zip up pubic bone to navel to sternum. And we'll do three more. Band slightly pulled apart. Pull it apart more as it approaches eyebrow or forehead level. And then bring it down behind you. And then up and over. Range of motions determined by how happy your shoulders are. We can all lift the corners of our mouth as well. Deep breathing. And third one, just lean forward slightly from your belly and step forward, good. So now let's take the band and hold it by the ends. So you've got the loop of it, the middle of it, kind of hanging down in front of you. Okay, now we'll stand on our left foot and place the right foot on the center loop of the band. So your stance is a little bit staggered. Your right foot is slightly in front of you, yeah. And then just pull your shoulders down. Now, if your balance is um, needing some support, you're gonna hold the band in both hands and hold onto something with your other hand, like a wall or a piece of furniture, right? If you don't need support from something, then go ahead and bend your elbows as you bend your knee. Now keep your elbows bent and press the band down and up toward the floor. So you're bending and straightening. So this is like uh, single leg pumps from the chair, the Pilates chair, right? So you visualize the band is the chair pedal, okay? And you're getting an, some isometric work in your biceps. And five, six, and for extra challenge, don't touch down. Seven, eight, nine, 10, good. Now keep your foot down, straighten your elbows, and we'll do 10 bicep curls and two. So keep pulling into belly, dropping your tailbone down, chest is lifted, three, four, good. Keep breathing, stay tall. So you know as you bend your elbows and you feel the weight increase, see if you can lift up against that weight instead of letting it pull you down. Nine and 10, good. And then we'll switch legs. So now holding on to two ends of the band, your right leg is standing on the floor, your left leg is slightly in front of you, standing on the band. Good, make sure the right leg is nice and firm, hips are level, and you zip up, and then bend your knee and both elbows, and press the band up and down 10 times. Good, for more challenge again, don't put your foot down. Deep breathing. Good, and then once you've done 10, keep your foot down. And we do 10 biceps curls. Keep lifting up against the weight. So you find your belly pulling in and out. Your chest lifted, you're lifting the crown of your head toward the ceiling, nine and 10. Beautiful job. Good. So let's do one more thing while we're here. 
take the band in both hands and again have it be smiley face in front of you so not not tension good and then we'll go ahead and stand at the front of the mat take a breath as you exhale step back with your right foot and spread the band apart and low so have it be across your hips like the fulcrum and then keep the band pressing on your hips inhale and rotate your body toward the left so you're rotating toward the front leg side exhale come to center inhale rotate the other way make sure your knee stays over your ankle exhale to center one more time inhale and exhale inhale and exhale awesome job let's go ahead and step forward release the band take a breath exhale step back with the left foot and then inhale Rotate toward the front leg. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate the other way. Knee over ankle. Exhale, center. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And step forward. One more time on each side. Step back. Spread the band apart. Shoulders back and down. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center, and step forward. And last time, step back. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center, and step forward. We're going to set our bands aside, and we'll come into a side support progression. So if you are on your side, your hip is down, your legs are down and bent, and your forearm is down. Let's make sure that we press away from the floor because if we're kind of like this, it will we'll not do anything good for our shoulder, right? So you press the floor away and lift your side waist first. And for some of us, that'll be plenty of work. If you need more work, then you lift up your hips. Now your hips start to extend. And if you need more, you straighten your legs and lift up and you're in a side support, okay? So we'll just hold here for a moment and just enjoy the strength we're building. If this is too much work in the shoulder that's down, you can come out of the position and go to a hand support. This is going to be more work in your shoulder with the forearm down. So yeah, and then we'll go ahead and lower on down. Beautiful job. And we'll swing our legs around and do the other side. Okay, so. Forearm is down, your hips and shoulders are stacked, press the floor away to start, okay? And then choose if you want to go further. So you would lift your hips next, extend your legs, and completely go into a side support. And hold, and breathe, and enjoy the strength you're building. And then we'll come down. Beautiful job. And then let's go ahead and swing our legs back around and we'll come down to our belly. We haven't been on our belly yet. So again, we're just gonna leave the bands alone and make yourself into kind of a starfish position on your mat. So your legs are slightly apart. You can have external rotation if you want in your legs. So that'll help you access your glutes a little bit more and your arms are a little bit wide and then go ahead and press down on the mat with your right arm and your left leg and then lift your right leg and your left arm nice take a breath pull your belly up and imprint your pubic bone and then put those limbs down now other side press your right leg and your left arm into the mat and lift the left leg and the right arm. Press your pubic bone into the mat, lift your belly, and hold. Perfect. And let's do that one more time on each side. So we'll press the left leg and the right arm into the mat. Okay, pull your belly up, lift the left arm and the right leg, and hold. Pull your belly up more, press your pubic bone down and then switch right leg and left arm press into the mat left leg and right arm lift 
So pull belly up, press pubic bone down, breathe, hold. Okay, so this is a really nice anterior and posterior oblique sling movement where your whole body's working. And then you can take that information if you wish and elevate all four limbs and we'll do a little swimming. If that's too much for your back, then just go back to pressing one arm down and one leg down as you lift the opposite arm and leg, okay? So either way. And then we'll rest down. Slide your hands down beside you. Find a place to press your arms down into the mat. Keep your legs slightly apart and then pull your shoulders down and lift your head, neck and shoulders and press up slightly with your hands. So we have a baby cobra or a baby swan, depending on what tradition you're from here. And then come down, take a breath. Exhale, come up. Slide your shoulders down and then inhale down. One more time, exhale, come up, slide your shoulders down, lift your hands. See if you could maintain that same height with your arms lifted and then come down. Good. Now place your forearms on the mat, tuck your toes under, Pull your shoulders down, lift your knees, lift your thighs, lift your hips, lift your body in one piece for a forearm support front plank. And we hold here, press through your heels, and then lower down in one piece. Let's try that again, because if we back bend to get up there, that's, that's not it yet. I know it's a, it's a lot of fun to try. Okay, so forearms are down, toes are tucked, if you thought that was easy, press from your hands instead of your forearms, okay? Lift your thighs, lift your, lift your hips, and push away to lift your body. Good. Then from here, lower your knees. Walk your hands back. Walk your knees forward and wide and move into a wide-legged child's pose. So if you want to avoid flexing your spine, stack your fists in front of you and put your forehead down on your fists. Take a few breaths. If you're okay with putting your forehead on the mat and stretching your arms forward, that's another option. You take two more breaths here. And then we'll go ahead and come up, come around, come into a Z sit. Okay, so one arm supporting, that shoulder is down. Bring your other arm up, take a breath, and bend your elbow to come down onto your forearm here. And we'll go into our side stretch and take a breath. Exhale, come up, push the floor away, see if you can balance. Good, and then hold on to your other shin. Reach up for the counter stretch. Take a breath. Come back through balance. Gracefully float down. Go back into your side stretch. Breathe. Then if you'd like to stay here, you can. Or you can inhale and open your heart toward the ceiling of the sky. Exhale deep. Exhale to pull your belly in. So your rib cage has room to rotate. And we move into our mermaid stretch. Okay. If you um, have bone density loss, it's better to stay in this position if, if, if it's in your um, femoral neck. If you do not have that, you need more stretch, you could flip over into pigeon pose from yoga. If, you're net, if your knee is not happy too, by the way, you can go on your back and do the figure four stretch that we did earlier in class. So. It's an equivalent stretch. Let's take one more breath here. And we'll inhale to unwind. Exhale, press the floor away, come up, ta-da! And we'll switch our legs around. Okay, so we're supported. One arm is up, we're finding length first, take a breath. 
and exhale over. Take a beautiful side stretch. Take a breath. And then press the floor away. Bring your arms out wide. Find your balance. Hold on to the other shin. Find your counter stretch. Take a breath. And then come back to balance. Gracefully float down. Breathe. Beautiful job. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, pull deep in the belly to rotate. And you can choose your variations from here or just stay in your, in your mermaid stretch. Every breath you take, you can feel that it affects the, everything in your body. So focus your breathing now on releasing any tension that doesn't need to be held. Examine how your breath changes the stretch. Enjoy the fact that you can take a good breath. The most important thing we do. Take one more breath here. And we'll inhale to unwind. Exhale, come on up. Beautiful job. All right, you all did a really great job. And uh, so keep your shoulders down and your abs in till I see you again. And it was lovely to see you.